Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek. I'll be talking about testing. So testing is a, a, a day at the Programming Formalisms course at Upmax. It's an online course that I teach. And there are some problems we have to uh, why, why testing is relevant. For example, when do you trust your own code? Do you assume that the moment you've written your code it is bug free? Or are you going to challenge that code? Or maybe you think, well, how much I challenge my code anyways, how much I test it. Uh, maybe there's still a bug and you're worried about them. When you use code by other, how do you know those are to be trusted? And also, let's say you found a bug in someone else's code, how you to convince him or her in an easy way. The answer to most of those things is testing. And we know that coding errors are extremely common. Um, and there is even, uh, and also it's actually the simple coding errors that are most common. Um, they help to contribute to the reproducibility crisis in science. Uh, it's a, it is a big problem. And testing can only help, but never guarantee the correctness of code. Um, there, there are some two books here that are quite famous, especially the C++ book is one of my big favorites. It's by Carl Langer, you can't see it at the bottom. Uh, this one is by Kent Beck. He revived the field of test-driven development or reinvented it or rediscovered it. So bugs are extremely common. And the first step we're gonna do is to get used to using a testing framework uh, and then we'll get into more details about how to, um, what, what, first we're going to feel how testing works. After that, we're going to get some more theory about testing. So there are multiple testing frameworks um, in Python. One is unit test, which is part of the standard Python library. Uh, PyTest is uh, one of the most famous non-standard ones. Uh, Nose and Nose 2 I've heard about. And those frameworks make it easier to write unit tests. So a unit test is a test that, simp that tests one function in isolation uh, and, and not, not, not big overarching things. But using a testing framework takes some uh, scaffolding. There needs to be some extra stuff around uh, it. You should to get it working. Uh, but if you have written that once, then usually uh, each of the individual tests are uh, easier to write. That's the idea. So for if you have only one simple test, then it will be longer. If you have 10, then it will be shorter. And one fun, f one useful thing about testing frameworks is that they give better error messages thanks to Hamcrest notation. I'll show this in a second. So let's see, let's compare a regular test with, uh, with testing framework, with unit test. So here we're going to test if something is true. So at the top we see how it looks like if you use, if you don't use a testing framework, you just assert, for example, that one plus one equals two. If you want to use unit tests, then you have to import the thing. You have to create a class, for example, called test. It has, I think it has to be called with test as well. Small, that's the name of the test case. It's a small test, so that's why I called it test small. And we're going to write a test called is true just to test the is true function. It's a very trivial function. And then finally we can write the test self dot assert is true one plus one equals two. Um, so that's a lot of work here uh, to test if one plus one equals two. But you'll see already in the next slide that it will get better. Because now we see that, now we're going to test if 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Not if this is true, but if these two things are equal. And that gives a different notation in the testing framework already. Now we can write assert equal 1 plus 1, comma 2. In that way, we can get a better, better error message. And in this form of notation called the Hamcrest notation. So you split up the arguments, you can also write a sort less than, greater than, and, and some other things. Um, and in that way, the error can be 1 plus 1. So let's say that I test for 1 plus 1 being equal to 3. Then the error message will be um, assertion failed. 2 is different than 3. Because it, can actually, it, it actually has a left-hand side and a right-hand side. 
So it can actually say that 2 is different than 3. So it will give you the two values that are compared to be equal and show if they differ. It shows both values if they differ. So thanks to Hamcrest notation, you can get clearer error messages. And this is certainly true when you want to check for exceptions being raised. So this is the so here we're gonna test a function called raise exception, raise error. All it what it does, it raises an um, an error. And for this, now without the testing framework, you need the scaffolding. So we're gonna write down that no exception has been raised. We're gonna try to raise that exception. If it indeed has been raised, then it has been it will be set to true. And then in the end, in the end we accept, we assert that this has been raised. Um, and this is a scaffolding to see if this raise error has been called. If we use unit test, however, there's an assertion called assert raises, where you put in the type of the uh, of the error being raised, and here you write down the, f the the name of the function. And in this case, it will call the function raise error itself. So you don't need to put the braces here, like the the the, the, the two parentheses. No, you just write raise error and will put in it will call it for you. If this function has more arguments, for example, let's say you want to put in a two, then you write runtime error, raise error, comma two. Then it will also put a two in for you, and it can do all the other arguments as well. But already here, for raising an exception, it will give a nice error message. Like, it, like it, if it's a different type of error, it will give a pro, uh, it will show that it will tell you if there's no error being raised. So using te unit test is already shorter here for one test when you test for raising an exception. So the first example we're going to do is to try to get acquainted with the unit testing framework. And we're going to write a function called is prime, which returns true if the input is prime, false if it's not, and gives an error when the input is not an integer. Uh, you can find the code here. Um, I'll be giving a live demo uh, to show you how it is. Um, for you, uh, I I will ask you to um, to not look at the demo, but try it out yourself. Uh, pair up in groups of two. I will do that. Uh, switch roles every three minutes or every TDD cycle. You can do that as well. Just uh, discuss how to do that and keep the time first. Really switch after three minutes, regardless of where you are in the process. Um, when you switch, one person has to pull, has to push his or her work. The other person has to pull his or her work. Um, the person that's driving, uh, uh, the person that's typing, shares his or her screen, of course. Um, the person driving will be the one with the GitHub username first in the alphabet of the two. And the, the, the goal is try to be an exemplary duo and try to get acquainted to the unit testing framework. Um, because is prime is a quite trivial function, but it's not about developing the function per se. It's more putting it in. Uh, put again by creating a fork of this repository. Develop the function in this file, and the tests are in that file. Um, this file again has the same uh, description of the problem as well. Uh, modify the README. And if you are really have time left, try to make all the tests pass. And with those tests, I mean the continuous integration tests, the GitHub actions. If you don't know what those are, um, ask me. It's on the GitHub. There's a tab called actions. Try to do those if you are really done. All right, but focus on getting yourself comfortable in using the unit test framework in this big, bigger project. Uh, try to work together nicely, and if you don't finish the whole function even, that's okay. All right. I wish you um, good luck and have fun.